What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Real quick before I start, just want to let you guys know that this morning around 7 a.m. my time, there was a Dragon Quest 11 uh, live stream that they were doing. It's basically Nintendo Direct essentially and they're showing gameplay for the 3DS version apparently. No real Switch gameplay from what they're saying, but I just want to give you guys a heads up in case you missed that or you're catching this bright and early in the morning a.m. There is a Nintendo Direct out there for Dragon Quest XI that you can also check out and see what happened. I'll cover that in tomorrow morning's episode of Newswave. So with that, guys, let's get started. And our first bit of news today, guys, is WWE 2K18 had its cover athlete revealed. Now, every year they have a different, I guess, wrestler or superstar, whatever you want to call them, on the front cover. And in this case, they decided to go with Seth Rollins, as you see here. And he will grace the cover of all the different versions. So he will be essentially their poster boy for now for this game. Now, the interesting thing about him, having him on the cover, is he's not recognized as much as, say, The Rock, who everyone knows him if you don't know wrestling. Like, I know The Rock. Uh, I know John Cena. I know Brock Lesnar. But I look there and I see Seth Rollins and I kind of go, okay, I, I, I guess he's a wrestler. Um, if you're really into the stuff, uh, I guess you would know exactly who he is and, and what party is of, I guess, the factions and everything. See, I, I, I watched wrestling a long time ago, um, back in the, I guess, 97, 98, 99, and then a little bit of 2000. So a lot of those guys, I would know if they're on the, on the cover. I do also know John Cena because he's been in movies and he's all over TV and award shows and everything. So he's He's pretty much mainstream as well as The Rock, Stone Cold. I understand all of those guys on the front, but if you put someone like Seth Rollins, who the public maybe doesn't know as well, you might end up losing sales. I don't know how well this game will sell to people who aren't wrestling fans, but the good thing here is it is Take-Two's other game that's coming out this year. They, of course, have basketball and wrestling um, because Red Dead, of course, getting pushed to the following year. But... I guess if you like wrestling, you know who he is. You might be happy, you might not be happy, depending on if you like him or not. And I guess that it's just like a Madden cover where you either like the team or the player or not. Guys, next up, remember how we talked about Rap Rabbit a little while ago, a couple weeks back, where they were starting a Kickstarter to really develop and create a game that was similar to like Parappa the Rapper, except they explained it as like a, a rhythm-based adventure action RPG style game, which sounded crazy, it sounded kind of out there, but... Overall, some people were interested because they did get backers for this project. The only problem is they may have shot a little too far, or at least predicted they would get a little more than they were actually going to get because Kickstarter did fail, and it failed by quite a bit. Of course, they were asking originally for over a million dollars, almost $1.1 million. And really now, everyone's kind of asking, well, what now? What, what do they do at this point? Well, they've at least shown that there is some interest in their game, that if they weren't going to make... The, the full amount they're asking for, 1.1 million USD dollars. They at least wanted to get some people interested, some people talking about it and showing that some people were willing to put their money in. Their, the amount they were asking though, and what they showed on their Kickstarter page, was it just wasn't gonna work. It, there's no way they were gonna get over a million dollars for what they showed, which was a very limited bit of the game, um, a couple levels, and they talked about the idea of it. But there wasn't much more substantial than that. And that, that's kind of the problem. They were shooting for way too much. I think if they had made it like four hundred dollars to $500,000 and people kind of showed up here today and said, well, they're like $100,000 away, maybe people will fund this. So people start funding on the last day. No one's going to fund it on the last day when you're over seven hundred dollars or $800,000 away from your goal. It's just not going to happen. But the fact that they've shown that there's interest in this game, even that much, like a little bit, it still can help them if they decide to go to a larger company. Maybe they want to go to a Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, or maybe they want to go to studios below them, like say like a Capcom or a Bandai Namco, and say, hey, people wanted this game. Why don't you guys help us create it so we can get it out to the market? This can still happen. Just because it failed on Kickstarter does not mean this is the last we see of Rap Rabbit. It could still show up on store shelves or on your digital uh, marketplaces at any time. And, and we'll see if anything happens. I'm sure they'll put a big press release out there if some company backs them. Or maybe they take another shot at, at a site like Kickstarter. Maybe they go over to Indiegogo, lower the threshold that they need, and, and take another shot at it. Because they already have backers now. If they take another shot, maybe they get those backers and then some other people see that they're a little more serious and the goal is lower. Uh, remember, these are the same people who had like a, what was like a $5 million goal to make a Switch version, which is like insane. They fixed it, but that like that's, that's just too much. So maybe they learned their lesson here. Maybe they'll take another shot. We'll have to wait and see though. And we finally got the NPD numbers released for May. This will tell us all the hardware and game sales for the month of May. 
and we find out a little more information here that kind of starts to back the claim that there must be a shortage of parts, specifically those flash chips, maybe the LCD screens for the Switch, because the PS4, despite all of the hype around the Switch, has managed to outsell the Switch in May. Now, there were games like Injustice 2, for example, that really helped the PS4 move along, um, but the Switch has to be constrained badly in really the, the, the initial stages when you start gathering parts because we heard all about how they're kind of battling Apple right now and other companies for these flash chips and LCD screens. And it looks more and more as we go along here that yeah, there is a massive constraint for Switch consoles. I have a strong feeling if there wasn't, the Switch probably would have sold uh, outsold the PS4 again in May, um, despite there not being a, a huge library of games that released. Um, I mean, yeah, Mario Kart kind of rolls over from April, but let's face it, everyone who bought Mario Kart bought it on like day one or that weekend as we heard where it sold like a million something copies in the first weekend, something crazy. But still, the Switch continues to sell well. I never see them in stock at my Walmart. I never see them in stock at my Target. And I go to Walmart for other things like shopping for food and stuff and I always go to the electronics section to see what's going on, never seen one. So yes, there is a constraint in, uh, in, in parts more than likely from what we're hearing and that is causing really a constraint of the entire assembly line in the system. So. Yeah, we're, and unfortunately, it sounds like, according to people like Daniel Ahmed, it's going to be going on pretty much the rest of the year. So, it's going to be tough. Finding a Switch is not going to be easy. So, I don't know what to say there. It's, it's, it's not easy at this point for Nintendo because they're battling companies that, let's face it, can kind of push them around when it comes to putting in orders. Apple could easily be like, yeah, we'll take 30 million of those now because we're going to sell all those iPhones. It's the way it is. They can they can just order that many. So Nintendo's in a weird spot because they're battling companies that are not even in really their section of electronics. You know, they're battling phones and tablets. And even though the Switch looks like a tablet, it technically is considered a game console and handheld. So this is uh, this is interesting. Real quick, the top five in the NPD for the list is Injustice 2, Mario Kart 8, Grand Theft Auto 5. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Prey. Also worth noting, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was the best single SKU seller. That means uh, because Injustice 2 is combined, obviously PS4, Xbox One, um, if you separate those two, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold better than either one of those two games separately. Together though, of course, they're gonna make up more than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Let's face it, there's more PS4 and Xbox Ones out there combined, so yes, it's gonna sell better. And no, we're not gonna get actual numbers, that's just not a thing. Uh, the only time we see those kind of numbers that get released by Nintendo, for example, remember how we saw like they said, oh, 280,000 sold? Keep in mind the, the phrase that accompanied those numbers. They would always say, best-selling console of the month. This is not their best-selling uh, month for the, I mean, the PS4 outsold it. There, there's no victory for them here in their, in their mindset, so they're not gonna put out these numbers. The only time we'll see numbers officially is when they have to put their quarterly report in, which we'll probably see towards the end of July if I had to take a bet. It's probably in there. We probably wouldn't see it early August. We'll probably see it at the end of July, 20, the week of like 20th to 27th, somewhere in there. Um, and that's probably when we'll actually see information about their rock solid numbers, you know, not just like them estimating or people trying to figure it out. They will tell us numbers like we saw before in their quarterly reports for fiscal uh, year quarter one of 2018. Next up, guys, we have Rocket League on the Switch. Now we saw a very quick kind of kind of teaser, a little bit of gameplay that we think is from the Switch in that in that entire direct. But now we actually have solid details coming out from developers. And the big thing here is the system will run the game at 60 frames per second, pretty much across the board, whether it's docked or undocked, which is good and it'll run it at a lower resolution of 720p, which may bother some, may not bother everyone though, you know, because it's it's 720p and handheld anyway. It seems like, it, it's a little odd here that it's 720p both docked and undocked. Um, they are letting people do split screen though, so you'll have two player split screen undocked or four player split screen docked, but it's a little odd that they didn't push it to 900p. It sounds like they wanted that rock solid frame rate, and I'm, I'm okay if the frame rate is just 60 locked, Really, most people who are playing this aren't going to have enough time to look around at the edges. Trust me, Rocket League is a fast, fast-moving game. You're not going to sit there with a tape measure and measure edges or, or look for aliasing when you're trying to block a shot on, on goal or try to put a shot in while you're, aer while you're doing an aerial across. It's not going to happen. But the fact that it's coming to the Switch is awesome for a lot of people. Like I said, I have it like three, two different ways right now, so I don't know if I'll buy it on the Switch again, although 
it's 20 bucks, so it's not that bad, to be honest. I might do it anyway. Um, and I do like the fact that they have four-player split screen or two-player split screen when away from the Switch. They have confirmed it will have every mode that is on, say, the, the Xbox One, the PS4, the PC version. It's all going to be parity across, which is good. And they also said that you can have eight Switches. Eight Switches, that's right, locally playing while sitting around wirelessly against each other or with each other. Um, any of the game modes where you can have eight people, and it's... That sounds like a blast if you have enough people around you. Maybe you're like, maybe you're on a plane and everyone has like Rocket League and you're all playing on the plane or like, on a, like you're, you're, you're taking a train somewhere. I don't know. It sounds like there could be some really cool scenarios there for everyone to kind of be, kind of just rock out with uh, Rocket League. Now, if you are looking for high resolution, they also confirm that the Xbox One X will have full 4K and HDR sitting at 60 frames per second as well. And of course, there is cross play between all of those consoles, minus the PS4, which is still strange to me, right? But the Xbox One X, the Xbox One, the Switch, and the PC can all kind of join up and play together, which is a cool idea. I, I really like that they have basically a couple servers for all those all those uh, game systems together. I, I like that a lot. But if you want 4K HDR, Xbox One X, or even PC, obviously, uh, if you just want to have it portably and maybe do split screen or kind of walk around with a bunch of people around you and play, just get the Switch. Guys, if you're a fan of Pokemon Go, it also looks like they're bringing out a probably what seems to be anyway that I, I can tell, one of their biggest patches and reworks of the entire game. And most of it has to do with the gyms in the game. So that looks like there's way more to do with those now. For example, at the gyms, if you leave a Pokemon there, you have to actually keep them motivated, which is interesting. They will slowly lose motivation and then kind of wander off and come back to you if you don't keep them motivated at that gym. They also have now like the, uh, like the wheel above that you can spin and get items and stuff from, which is great. And they have this new raid mode, which looks really cool too where like a bunch of people will join up i think it's like up to 20 people will join up and then try to take down a very strong pokemon that everyone will have to fight together to do now when the raid boss is defeated the, the really strong pokemon apparently everyone has a chance to get rare items like they've pointed out things like rare candies which is cool or you have the chance to actually catch the raid boss themselves uh, at the end when they are defeated so that's kind of neat as well i think they showed tyranitar in like the the big promotional piece where they had like 25,000 cp and everyone was just trying to wipe him out so it looks very cool to do that I, I i've wanted events like these for a while in this game unfortunately i feel like they've waited a little too long i think a lot of people kind of fell out of pokemon go will this bring them back maybe i think new pokemon have a much stronger pull on people than say raids right because if you tell everyone whoa mewtwo is in this game you can get mewtwo through obviously a ton of events to to get him you have to work to get him but Mewtwo's in this game now. A lot of people are probably going to hear that and come back, just like they did for the Gen 2 update. Maybe we see the next generation start to kind of kind of wander in, and then more people come back. Or the legendaries are finally revealed, and everyone comes back. But we'll have to see. I do like that they updated it. I just I wish they had done it sooner, especially when this game was way hotter. It was white hot a while ago, right? Now it's kind of cooled off, so... We'll see if anyone actually comes back for this. I feel like this is just going to really make the core people who've stuck around happy more than anyone. And guys, last bit of news today is actually really cool. It centers around the ability to program using the Switch. And what's really neat about this is I think there's a lot of potential here for people who really don't do a lot of programming at all, or maybe they're intimidated by it, maybe to kind of get a look at it, get a feel for it, and maybe kind of move up to more advanced languages. And what we're seeing here is something called Fuse Code Studio. And it's set up in a sense that it will allow maybe beginners who have never coded before even, because they even say no coding is required because you can kind of learn with this uh, coding language or this setup called BASIC. And it is, they've kind of customized it a bit. It's a variant of BASIC which usually when you start programming, if you want to get into it, basic is like the easiest one to enter and, and kind of play around with as a beginner. And in this case, they're going to let you program directly on the Switch. Now this actually uh, will work really well because now we know with the update that came out, you can use a keyboard with your Switch, which is cool. I mean, we've kind of known that for a little while now that you've been able to use a keyboard, but it's officially supported now. And in a setup like this, where you can program if you have it on the TV and you have your keyboard set up and you can program on this specifically for a studio that is set up for beginners, I think this is great because especially if like younger kids get the system and they kind of look into this, maybe if they're like entering high school or they're in middle school and they kind of start playing around with it, they could really lead in some people getting into game development or just app development in general. And that's great for everyone. That's great for the future of technology like this. So I hope this works out. Right now, there's no real release date. It's slated for quarter two of 2018. Um, 
next year. And at this point, they have a page set up and you could check it out. I'll put it in the description below where they're talking a little more about it. And they're also accepting contributions in the form of donations, things like that. And I hope it comes out. I hope they're able to get it to the Switch because at face value, it sounds awesome. I don't know how much it'll cost, if any. Keep in mind, this might end up being like an open source thing and it's just free. You just get it and you can learn to program on your Switch. Very cool idea. I, I think this is good for gaming and, and, again, technology in general. And I hope this does come out and come to fruition. It seems like they're going to work on it as, like, a, like a, an independent-type studio, calling it uh, Fuse Code Studio, and kind of just put it out for everyone to get. It also could end up being 10 bucks. I don't know. But right now, it seems to be in the pretty early stages of porting it to the Switch and basically getting everything to work. Oh, I also want to address one other thing. It sounds like people are maybe a little concerned about this possibly leading to the system being hacked since you're technically coding and then running code on the system. My guess here, at least with Nintendo looking at this, what they would probably want is for you to kind of have it set up as a virtual machine when you launch this program, or at least your code is run in a virtual machine, which means it's pretty much completely separate from the main system. So it kind of sets up over here, runs the program that does not have actual access to anything in the system for root access. And that, that makes a lot of sense. That's how a lot of people make test programs, for example, for viruses by loading up a virtual machine on their computer because it's completely separate from the rest of their system. And that makes a lot of sense. That is exactly how I would expect them to make this so that it, it can't lead to the system being hacked, exploited, whatever you want to call it. So at this point though, I'm excited. I hope it does turn up and it will keep an eye on this. It's going to be a developing story well in the next year is what it looks, looks like. And that's it for News Wave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me think about anything we talked about today, whether it is Rap Rabbit, maybe you backed that program, that game, and you're really upset that it didn't make it to uh, the, the million dollars that they wanted for some reason. I still don't know why they wanted a million dollars, but maybe you're upset they didn't make it there because you liked rhythm-based games like this and it sounded cool. I'm sure they'll be back. I don't think this is the last we've heard of them. I would just keep an eye out for any other uh, Kickstarter type things they try to start up because maybe you could help them out and, and back them right away as they try to work towards their goal. Let me think about Fuse on the Switch and the Basic Studio. Maybe you like the idea of learning to program on a game system like that that's portable. You can walk around with it. And according to them, you can pop it into the dock and share your designs and your programs with people that are right in the room. That's a great idea. Also, let me know what you think about the PS4 outselling the Switch in the MPD charts. Uh, you know what? Maybe you think it's from constraint as well. I, I think we all know it's probably from constraint of some kind. And it does look like it is uh, those flash chips that are kind of being battled out uh, for in the background by these companies. That's it for now, guys. I will see you next time.